we will learn about uh, the basics of credit market in this video we will learn both from the point of view of loans as well as from the bonds so what is the credit market well this is a market where people raise money or get money or get credit right it's as simple as that right you go to a bank to get money so that is loosely defined as uh, a credit market and it's of four types uh, one is for sovereign that means countries are interested to raise money or to get money uh, so that's sovereign then you have financials that means financial institutions for example banks and non-banking financial corporations central banks they want money so they go to other banks to get the money okay and then you have corporate financing which is about the large corporations or mid-sized corporations you know companies like IBM or companies like Shell or Philips or Tata Motors or Ford Motors you know these companies want credit these are corporate credit right uh, large size companies but sometimes also mid-sized companies and then you have retail financing or retail credit which is about individual borrower or small medium sized companies SME financing so in individual borrowers you could take uh, you know the mortgages you go for mortgages or you go for student loan or for retail financing you also have retail SME financing for example small size companies um, wanting credit from banks so that's retail financing so so you have these four types of um, credit and we will see more about how these credits differ and both in terms of the product point of view as in uh, how the products differ with uh, with all these four categories and also the risk assessment how it is different actually okay now banking business in, in these days is primarily of two types you have retail business which is more individual SME type which bit of a boring uh, side of the banking business and you also have a uh, a more interesting uh, type of business which is the corporate and investment banking business which is about financing financial institutions sovereign and corporate clients doing trading and these kind of activities all right so retail um, banking which is about catering to the credit demand for individuals or small and medium scale companies it is more data driven that means you have tons of data you have automated credit score systems to decide whether to give a loan to the individual or to the SME client or not whereas uh, the corporate or investment banking division is not that data driven as in there's still some data used but you also uh, use uh, expert opinion you also use information beyond uh, you know the data that is available to you so it is less data driven and it is more personalized in some cases also influenced although many banks will not agree to that but influenced now you also have household credit right which is more uh, in the retails right retail financing which is mortgage or consumer finance so in the case of mortgage you have uh, you know your house as a collateral you get a loan for a very longer period of time between 10 to 30 years in most countries where you make a fixed payment uh, you know over over this period and if you're not able to pay uh, you know your monthly payments then the, the bank will uh, take the house which is your collateral and which sell it and and then it will refinance the loan right uh, then you have consumer finance which is about financing for different kinds of needs and you have student finance um, you know to you know students uh, take loan to to finance their education you have auto finance like to buy a car credit card is different kind of finance is by it's a bit different than other uh, household credit which is that it's revolving in nature that means uh, unlike mortgage or consumer finance or student finance where you actually get the entire amount of money when the loan is granted to you in the case of credit card you don't get the entire money right uh, you 
you have the access to certain amount of money but you don't use that from the day one right so you don't pay interest on your loan from day one depending on how much you spend um, yeah you will pay the interest and uh, so you have a credit limit and uh, yeah your outstanding uh, depends on how much you spend you also have revolving credit in, in uh, in corporate loans also in fact most of the corporate corporate loans are revolving credit uh, I'll, I'll talk about more about that later all right so a bit about revolving and non revolving credit where revolving credit uh, as I just said comes with a predefined maximum limit especially for uh, you know this big corporation they want credit for various things like right? for investment on research and development investment or marketing uh, they want to expand into a different or new uh, geography they want money for that There's, they're investing on uh, a new product they need uh, they want to expand upon their uh, uh, production capacity and they need money for that so for all these things then they they need money they will be corporations and they need money from the bank not immediately because if you have a large sum of money immediately in your bank account you do not I mean the company will not know as to where to spend that money on right because it might be needed for uh, uh, over a period of couple of years time a couple of months time but normally for big corporations over a couple of years time so uh, so in the case of a revolving credit the corporation which which has taken the loan has uh, availability of the entire set of money entire sum of money for instance let example 100 million but uh, it depends how much money it uh, withdraws right on that particular amount withdrawal amount it will pay the interest right it might withdraw maybe a 50 million over a period of three months over three years um, so depending on what exactly the outstanding it is going to pay the interest right if 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 it withdraws entire hundred million uh, at the beginning itself then it is not a revolving credit right so it's actually a benefit to the both parties right both from a credit uh, from a risk assessment point assessment point of view it is beneficial to the to the bank because if the company is not able to pay back the interest and all that thing then it can stop financing right it it can do that also uh, so from a risk management point of view it is also good but also for the client it's also good because um, you know it already has an approval limit on how much money it can spend so it doesn't have to go back to the bank again and again but at the same time the bank doesn't have to pay the interest from the day one right depending on how much it spends from that limit it will pay the interest so that's a good thing and it's also there in retail financing as i said credit card is is also an example and banks can access funds anytime sorry not the banks here the corporations can access funds anytime okay and interest is charged only on the outstanding not on the limit not on the 100 million right For the first year the the corporation uh spent 10 million so it will pay the interest only on the 10 million for the first year the second year it spent another 30 million so then on 40 million it will pay the interest okay and so on and so forth although it has a limit of 100 million you know that's just for example all right what about risk assessment well for retail actually we have uh, more data so most banks use credit scorecard automated scorecard in many cases uh, highly automated scorecard that means there is no hu human intervention uh, in many places especially the fintechs right what they do is that you can simply um, provide the information on their website or the web, web app and your loan will be granted so you don't have to talk to a loan officer for that so it's fully automated and that's happening in uh, in many fintechs but also in traditional banks but that's more on you know retail financing on the corporate side corporate and financial institution side or sovereign uh, banks rely on rating institutions such as s p moody's fitch you know these rating agencies but also they build um, in-house uh, default models so what is the probability of default for 
for a given financial institution client or a given corporate client. So corporate models are also developed within the banks and uh, you also have de you know default models for financial institutions for sovereign so on forth for and uh, so yeah so they use both internal models as well as the external models and uh, you also uh, they also use uh, expert opinion and sometimes they override the model output so this is a lot less uh, automated right so the role of the analyst it's very very important in corporate financing compared to retail financing although in many banks still they're using a lot of uh, expert opinion and uh, uh, you know manual work in retail financing but in corporate financing it is a lot higher compared to retail financing okay um We'll learn about bit of a bond market again. It's uh, part of the credit uh, market, but it is a bit different actually. How is it different than the loan? The loan market is not traded in the financial market, um, not at least directly, not directly, right? The loan market is not directly traded in the uh, financial market, in the stock market, in the financial market, but dates. Uh, are traded that means bonds are traded a bond market is also otherwise known as the date market the dates are traded in the financial market okay so that is one uh, important difference between bond market and the loan market okay uh, and bonds are issued in primary markets and then traded in the secondary market but there is no secondary market for loans There are different types of bonds. You have corporate bonds, public sector bonds, bank and FI bonds, government, central banks or you know state uh, governments. So bonds are basically um, some documents. Bonds are used by these corporations. You know, whether it's big corporates or it's uh, banks or financial institutions, non-banking financial corporations, governments to raise money from the open market. And uh, internally, sometimes, for example, the government of US can raise money from internally from the US people, or the US corporation, US banks, US institutions, or from abroad also, from foreign agency, you know, foreign governments, foreign banks, or you know, even normal people from the foreign countries, they can buy uh, government bonds. Banks and financial institutions also do that. When they need money, they can issue bonds um, in the primary market, but these are again traded in the secondary market, by the way. And it is uh, assumed that the government bonds are risk-free, uh, especially for the or bonds from developed countries, such as the Germany or the UK or the US, Canada. Um, there is definitely some risk involved, but it is still very very low even the risk of the financial uh, the bonds from the banks and financial institutions is also considered to be uh, of very low risk that assumption can be challenged because after 2008 financial crisis we all know that even the banking bonds are not very risk free public sectors enterprises also issue bonds they are supported by the government hence the bond is also of low risk whereas the corporate bonds are uh, corporate bonds are uh, of somewhat risky uh, but normally the small and medium scale companies do not issue bonds large corporations such as you know general motor ford you know british petroleum shale and you know tata group of companies you know such big corporations issue uh, corporate bonds and these are risky bonds because corporates uh, do not get that kind of backing of the government right so if they go bankrupt then then people will lose money hence risky and the expected return is therefore on corporate bond is higher that that means you expect the bond rate to be higher than you know the bond rate for a government bond corporate bond has been in use for many many centuries now i think way back in 16th or 17th century this was started 
and this particular uh, Im you know the image that you see on the slide um, was from the Dutch East Indian Company otherwise known as uh, I think the what is called Vo, right uh, yeah this company uh, was in Netherlands uh, it was I think that time it was the 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 biggest company in the world the the, the richest company in the world and it issued bonds to the public normal public public in Netherlands so in fact even the stock market even started in Netherlands in Amsterdam right so so this is this is an example of and nowadays I think most you know big companies are doing that to raise money to raise capital for various things yeah uh, we have discussed a bit about risk assessment for uh, bonds uh, most of the times uh, the, uh, we do risk assessment with uh, ratings from the rating agencies such as S&P, Moody's and, and Fitch. And as I said, government bonds from developed countries are considered risk free, although not free from interest rate risk. That means there is some sort of risk from market risk, but uh, from a credit risk point of view, it is it is quite low. FI and banking bonds used to be considered risky before 2008 financial crisis, but not any longer. Whereas corporate debt instruments are risky. Uh, some are more riskier than the others, right? Depending on how stable the company is, right? So, you know, before buying corporate uh, debt, any corporate in debt instrument, one should do a proper assessment on uh, the the stability of the company but you can also look at the ratings provided by the rating agency i think it it, it uh, is a proxy of the stability of the company financial stability of a given company all right you have questions please let me know in the comments